Welcome to Wall Street News Briefing. The content of the briefing includes Stock market today, Asian stocks decline after Wall Street logs its worst week in the last 10. Deep oil price cut by Saudis highlights softer physical market. Australia bans Nazi salutes as anti-Semitism grows amid Israel-Gaza war. Runway at Tokyo's Haneda Airport reopens a week after fatal collision. Hackers help Philippines' understaffed cyber defense team fight China threat. Stock market today, Asian stocks decline after Wall Street logs its worst week in the last 10. Associated Press. Asian stock markets have fallen on Monday, with Hong Kong's Hang Seng down 1.9% to 16,187.00, along with other indexes in South Korea and Australia also suffering losses. The decline follows Wall Street's worst week since Halloween and a drop in oil prices after Saudi Arabia cut prices to their lowest level in 27 months. On Sunday, China announced sanctions against five American defense-related companies in response to U.S. arms sales to Taiwan. Japan's markets were closed for a holiday. Deep oil price cut by Saudis highlights softer physical market. Bloomberg. Saudi Aramco has cut the official selling price for its Arab light crude to $1.50 per barrel premium to the regional benchmark for February, the lowest since November 2021. The $2 per barrel reduction was larger than expected, reflecting a weaker physical crude market in Asia due to lackluster Chinese demand and increased global supplies. Despite the price cut, Asian customers are unlikely to request additional deliveries from Saudi Arabia as there are cheaper alternatives available in the spot market. Last month, Chinese refiners received less Saudi crude for January loading, prompting them to turn to other suppliers. Australia bans Nazi salutes as anti-Semitism grows amid Israel-Gaza war. South China Morning Post. Australia has implemented new laws that ban the Nazi salute and the display or sale of symbols associated with terror groups. The move comes in response to a rise in anti-Semitic incidents following the Israel-Gaza war. Offenders can face up to 12 months in prison for publicly performing the Nazi salute or displaying the Nazi swastika or other symbols associated with the SS paramilitary group. The sale and trade of these symbols is also prohibited. The law also bans the public display or trade in symbols associated with prohibited terror organizations, such as Islamic State, Hamas or the Kurdistan Workers' Party, PKK. Exemptions exist for academic, educational or artistic use. Runway at Tokyo's Haneda Airport reopens a week after fatal collision. Associated Press. Tokyo's Haneda Airport has reopened its runway after a week-long closure following a fatal collision between a Japan Airlines aircraft and a Coast Guard plane. The incident, which is believed to have been caused by human error, resulted in the deaths of five Coast Guard crew members. The collision caused over 1,200 flights to be cancelled and affected around 200,000 passengers. The investigation will focus on why the Coast Guard crew believed they had received clearance for takeoff. The airport has introduced a new position to monitor the runway and improve safety. Hackers help Philippines' understaffed cyber defense team fight China threat. South China Morning Post. The Philippines is facing a growing threat of state-sponsored cyber attacks, which are a bigger challenge than the country's maritime vulnerabilities in the South China Sea, according to cybersecurity experts. Recent attacks blamed on China's stately Taurus Group have targeted Philippine government agencies and compromised tens of thousands of user accounts. The country's cybersecurity response team is understaffed and lacks the necessary resources to tackle the issue effectively. The Philippines is among the world's most attacked countries, and there are concerns over the government's ability to recruit and retain cyber talent due to a lack of funding. China builder Xin Yuan's U.S. unit files for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Bloomberg. Xin Yuan Real Estate Co. Limited, a Chinese developer, has seen its subsidiary, Hudson 888 Owner LLC, file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection in the Southern District of New York Court. The estimated liabilities and assets for Hudson 888 Owner are both within the range of $100 million to $500 million. Xin Yuan Real Estate Co. Limited fell into distress in 2022 and did not make an interest payment in October of that year. It conducted a dollar debt exchange in June 2023 and hired Alvarez and Marcel as its restructuring advisor. China said it caught a foreign consultant spying for UK's MI6. Bloomberg. The head of an overseas consulting firm has been detained by China's spy agency, accused of espionage for the UK. The Chinese Ministry of State Security said that MI6 employed the consultant from a third country to work as a spy for the UK. The consultant allegedly provided the British intelligence service with state secrets and intelligence. 
The Chinese agency said that the UK had approached the consultant in 2015 for intelligence cooperation and that the MI6 had trained the consultant to carry out espionage. Hyundai is big in America after focusing on smaller EVs. Financial Times Hyundai and Kia have overtaken Ford and General Motors to become the second-largest electric vehicle EV, sellers in the US, behind Tesla. The combined U.S. market share of Hyundai and Kia reached 7.5% in the first three quarters of 2023, ahead of Chevrolet, GM, with 5.9% and Ford with 5.5%. Tesla dominated the market with its 57.4% share. Hyundai reported 5% YOY sales growth in Q4 2023, with a near doubling of sales of its EV Ionic 5. Analysts highlighted Hyundai's decision to focus on affordable sedans and compact SUVs that offer good range and driving dynamics, unlike the US's big three automakers, which concentrate on large SUVs and pickup trucks. Hyundai's success has been achieved despite the absence of a $7,500 federal tax credit for customers, which is available for cars built in North America, as its EVs are not built in the US. However, leased vehicles are eligible for the credit, and Hyundai and Kia's leased EVs account for around 40% of their total EV sales. Japan's record arms spending will require controversial taxes, welfare cuts. South China Morning Post. Japan is increasing its defense spending to its highest ever level and easing lethal weapon exports in order to play a bigger role in international security. According to experts, this could compromise Japan's pacifist stance and hurt welfare spending. The government will have to make controversial political decisions such as reducing welfare spending to fund the increase in defense spending. In the long term, Tokyo will also have to revitalize its defense industry to secure funding. The export of Patriot missiles to the US is vital in boosting Japan's defense industry and the Japan-US defense equipment supply chain. Experts also said that Japan could fund the enlarged defense budget through financial surpluses, non-tax revenue and expenditure reforms. Japan recently signed a pact to jointly develop with Britain and Italy a next-generation fighter jet, its first major tie-up that did not involve the US since World War II. The sale of Patriot missiles to the US means Japan could provide lethal weapons to other countries at some point, including Australia, India and Southeast Asian countries. Los Angeles Dodgers slugger Mookie Betts hits Golden Globe's red carpet as budding Hollywood producer. Associated Press. Mookie Betts, the Los Angeles Dodgers slugger, attended the Golden Globes wearing a different hat, that of the owner of his own media company. Betts founded the company, called OMG, in 2020 as a potential post-baseball career. He was looking to network with Hollywood heavyweights at the event and potentially strike a deal. Betts recently spent time with actor and comedian Will Ferrell at a Los Angeles Kings game. When asked who he was wearing, Betts struggled to answer, saying he was wearing confidence. Calling India's Modi clown, terrorist gets Maldives officials suspended. South China Morning Post. The Maldives government has suspended three deputy ministers for making derogatory comments about India's Prime Minister, Narendra Modi, on social media. The comments were made in response to a video of Modi promoting local tourism in the Indian islands. The incident comes as the Maldives president, Mohamed Muizu, prepares to visit China and follows his pledge to end the Maldives' India first policy. Berkshire settles claims over pilot travel sale on eve of trial. Bloomberg. Warren Buffet's Berkshire Hathaway has settled allegations that it violated the terms of its buyout of truck stop chain Pilot Travel Centers. Berkshire acquired an 80% stake in Pilot Travel for over $10 billion from billionaire Jimmy Haslam, and was accused of improperly changing the accounting methods to short-change the Haslam family out of their remaining 20%. The settlement is likely to allow Buffet to purchase the remaining 20% of Pilot Travel from Haslam later this month. Fed pivot will dominate year of rate cuts in turn of global cycle. Bloomberg. Central banks around the world are expected to start easing monetary policy and cutting interest rates in the coming year as inflation continues to fall. The US Federal Reserve has already signaled 75 basis points of cuts for the year, while other central banks, such as those in Brazil and the Czech Republic, have already begun the process. The European Central Bank, ECB, is more reticent to signal cuts, but Bloomberg Economics expects the first easing there to materialize in June, while the Bank of England is also expected to cut rates that month. Japan is expected to tighten policy by ending negative rates, and emerging economies, such as Argentina, Russia, and Mexico, are also expected to push through steep rate cuts. The plans to bring down rates are contingent on inflation continuing to slow, but readings on both headline and core inflation are cooling, 
allowing officials to begin easing borrowing costs for households and businesses. In summary, central banks around the world are preparing to ease monetary policy and cut interest rates as inflation falls. The U.S. Federal Reserve has already signaled cuts, while other central banks, such as the ECB and Bank of England, are expected to follow suit. Japan is expected to end negative rates, and emerging economies are also expected to push through rate cuts. The plans to bring down rates are contingent on inflation continuing to slow, but readings on both headline and core inflation are cooling, allowing officials to begin easing borrowing costs. China's retail property markets show signs of revival in last quarter of 2023. South China Morning Post. Retail property markets in China's first-tier cities, including Beijing and Shanghai, are showing signs of improvement, with a drop in vacancy rates and an increase in rental rates. The growth is being driven by improved consumption and a gradual increase in retail sales. In Beijing, the average vacancy rate in Q4 2023 dropped to its lowest level since Q2 2022, while in Shanghai, demand for leasing grew as retailers rushed to expand their stores. However, the supply of retail projects also increased, leading to a rise in the vacancy rate and a drop in rental rates in the city. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your favorite observer from the Six Degrees World, Dr. Six. I hope you're all doing well today. Let's dive into the news. First up, we have Asian stock markets taking a hit after Wall Street's worst week in a decade. It seems like the stock market is having a bit of a Halloween hangover. I guess the ghosts of bad investments are still haunting the market. But hey, don't panic, there's always a chance for a rebound. Just like when you dress up as a ghost, you can scare people one moment and make them laugh the next. Next, Saudi Arabia is making headlines with its deep oil price cut. It seems like they're trying to make oil prices as low as the prices at a Halloween clearance sale. But this cut reflects a weaker demand and increased global supplies. It's not just about trick or treating for oil producers, it's about finding the sweet spot in the market. Moving on, Australia is cracking down on anti-Semitism by banning the Nazi salute and symbols associated with terror groups. It's good to see Australia taking a strong stand against hate. Let's hope this ban is more effective than garlic against vampires. In aviation news, Tokyo's Haneda Airport has reopened its runway after a week-long closure due to a fatal collision. It's a reminder that even in the high-flying world of aviation, safety always comes first. It's like playing a game of airplane chess, one wrong move and it's game over. Now, let's talk about cybersecurity. The Philippines is facing a growing threat of state-sponsored cyber attacks. It seems like they're in a digital battle with China, but they're a bit short-staffed and lacking resources. Maybe they should recruit some hackers with the skills of Sherlock Holmes to solve this cyber mystery. In business news, a Chinese real estate developer's US unit has filed for bankruptcy. Looks like they've hit a real estate dead end. Maybe they should have built a haunted house instead, they might have attracted more buyers. In a shocking revelation, China claims to have caught a foreign consultant spying for the UK. I guess James Bond has some competition now. It looks like the spy game is getting more international. Maybe next time they can have a spy Olympics, with events like the 100-meter dash to escape capture and the synchronized hacking routine. On a lighter note, Hyundai and Kia have become the second-largest electric vehicle sellers in the US, behind Tesla. They're proving that sometimes it's the underdogs who come out on top. It's like the tortoise beating the hare in an electric car race. In political news, Japan is increasing its defense spending and easing lethal weapon exports. Looks like Japan is stepping up its game and becoming a bigger player in international security. It's like they've upgraded from a samurai sword to a lightsaber. In entertainment, Mookie Betts, the Los Angeles Dodgers slugger, attended the Golden Globes as a budding Hollywood producer. I guess he's trying to hit a home run in the entertainment industry now. Who knows, maybe we'll see him accepting an Oscar in the future. And finally, the Maldives government has suspended three deputy ministers for making derogatory comments about India's prime minister. Looks like they've learned the hard way that insults can sink your political career faster than the Titanic. That's all the news for today, folks. Remember, life is like a roller coaster, with its ups and downs. But no matter what, we'll always be here to bring you the latest updates from the Six Degrees world. Now, it's time for your thoughts. What do you make of these headlines? Let's hear your ideas. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the Six Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. 
Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.